So in this video, we're going to be learning about enthalpy changes and how that re relates to some of the other topics we've been uh, discussing in thermochemistry. Um, you can express a change in enthalpy using a thermochemical equation, and I usually just call these enthalpy diagrams. So just as a reminder, enthalpy is the amount of heat transferred during a physical or chemical change. Um, for our purposes, you can pretty much think of it as the same thing as heat. Um, that uh, link obviously won't work in your video. I will uh, provide it in an another form. Uh, the symbol for enthalpy is H, and you most often see it uh, written as delta H, which means the change in enthalpy. Take a look at these uh, two processes and think about whether or not these would include, these would be a positive or negative change in enthalpy. So the big clue here is down at the bottom, whether or not heat is being gained or lost by the system. Take a minute and think about it and write whether it would be positive delta H or negative delta H. Okay, so melting an ice cube would be uh, have a positive enthalpy change because heat is being absorbed by the ice in order for it to melt. In uh, a fire, there's a negative enthalpy change because heat is being released to the outside rather than being taken in uh, to the system. And So here is a GIF of uh, chlorine gas and sodium being combined to make sodium chloride. Do you think this is an endothermic or exothermic reaction? It's an exothermic reaction. A lot of heat is given off. If you see light coming out, you, that pretty much means that you are releasing energy. Um, so, in fact, the amount of energy, you could express it in kilojoules. Uh, joules is a unit of energy, and you could express it as kilojoules per mole of table salt created. And in this case, it's uh, 411 kilojoules per mole. So, one more time, is this delta H going to be positive or negative? It would be negative because heat is being given off. I know that may seem counterintuitive, but if heat is going out from whether the reaction is coming, then you're losing it, and so it would be negative. So just to back up, um, you can express the enthalpy change for a reaction uh, using a chemical equation, and you can talk about the enthalpy change for the reaction um, that way. So calcium oxide is uh, called lime, and it's part, uh, it's often a component of concrete and cement. And when it is added to water, it releases a lot of heat. Uh, it can get actually pretty hot enough to cause burns. Um, so for every mole of calcium oxide, uh, dissolved into water, you release uh, 65 kilojoules. And here's how we would ex draw a diagram to sh show that. So this graph is saying that the enthalpy, uh, the not change, but where the, the enthalpy is, um, is on the y-axis. And you can sort of think of the x-axis as time. So we have calcium oxide dissolving in water, and it starts off with this much energy, potential energy, but the process of dissolving it releases this much energy, and so now the um, final amount of energy is listed there. And it seems to me that this could be, cons oh, in, in this process it changes from calcium oxide to calcium hydroxide, and that reaction gives off energy, not dissolving. It's partially dissolving and partially changing into calcium hydroxide. 
Um, so one more time, each mole of calcium oxide reacting to form calcium hydroxide releases 65 joules, kilojoules of energy, and that's listed as a negative delta H. And in an exothermic process, the chemical potential energy of the reactants, now in this case, the calcium oxide, is going to be higher than the final energy of the product, the calcium hydroxide. And that's because energy was lost. So here's the reactants, higher energy. Here's the product, lower energy. And so energy dropped, negative change. You can heat up baking soda and it will decompose into sodium carbonate, water, and carbon dioxide. And it's actually the carbon dioxide that is released that helps raise baked goods. So in this case, the enthalpy diagram would go the opposite way. The reactant is sodium bicarbonate, baking soda, and it starts at a lower energy. You have to heat it up. In other words, add energy. So in this case, the delta H would be positive. And the products at the end are going to uh, have a higher energy because you put more energy into it. Um, so this makes sense. You are adding heat to make this happen. So that is why the delta H is positive. Heat of combustion is the heat that's given off when something burns. Small amounts of natural gas uh, are burnt off during uh, oil, the oil refining process, and this is to prevent explosions, um, but it does produce a lot of CO2, so it's unfortunate that this process happens. Um, so this is going to be an exothermic reaction. By now, you should probably be, be pretty familiar with the fact that fire is going to be an exothermic reaction. Um, and burning one mole of methane releases 890 kilojoules of heat. And if you go flip uh, go back in this video, you'll see that that's actually quite a bit of heat. Um, so negative 890 kilojoules per mole. Um, and here's an example of a list of heats of combustion for different substances. Um, so we've got a couple of substances here. Methane is the, the main ingredient in the gas that we cook with. Octane is one of the names of the main ingredient in gasoline. And they have two different uh, heats of combustion. And so they also have two different molar masses. So we can use the molar masses and the kilojoules per mole to figure out which one releases the most heat per gram. Why don't you try to pause the video and see if you can think of how you might calculate that. Give it a shot. I'm waiting. Okay, so here's how we would solve that. Um, 890 kilojoules per mole for methane times one mole per 16 grams, that's the molar mass, gives you 56 kilojoules of heat per gram. Octane is 5,471 kilojoules per mole, and, but we would have to divide that by 114 grams per mole, the other way around, and we get 48 kilojoules of heat per gram. So even though its heat of combustion is lower because it weighs so much less, methane produces more heat per gram. So you get more heat out of natural gas than you do heavier fossil fuels. So this is why um, natural gas is often proclaimed to be the greener of the the greenest of the fossil fuels because it you need less of it to get the same amount of heat produced. Um, so you can get more energy with less CO2 produced as well from burning natural gas. That's the big thing, is that you get more heat per gram and less CO2 per gram with methane. 
it still is great for the environment because it still produces CO2. Plus methane is also a very potent greenhouse gas. So using having it around and it leaking into the atmosphere isn't going to help us much either. Uh, so here's some more of the math for that. Um, if you look at the balance equations for burning the two things, methane and octane, um, you can see that um, one mole of methane produces one mole of CO2. So that ends up being almost three times the mass of methane and CO2 produced. Why is it more mass of CO2? Because you're adding oxygen to uh, the other, to the carbon. Uh, in octane, you end up having a molar ratio of um, 16 to 2. And so that ends up being uh, quite a bit higher. And so you get 16 moles of CO2 per 2 moles of octane. And that is straight up 3 times the weight of um CO2 produced per weight of fuel. So it's a little bit less with, with methane. So pause the video in a second and think of which of these um, equations looks like a endothermic reaction. Hopefully you chose A because in A we're seeing energy being added to the substance. Um, if I'll try to, like I said, try to post links up to these videos that are referenced. Uh, but this is one example of a reaction that would be found in some fireworks. And uh, we have zinc plus ammonium nitrate creates nitrogen gas, zinc oxide, and water, but it releases a lot of light and heat. The enthalpy change is 348 kilojoules. The question is, uh, the enthalpy change for making zinc oxide is 348 kilojoules. Is this a positive or negative change? This is an exotherm exothermic reaction. So the heat is being lost to the system and the uh, change in enthalpy would be negative. So let's try our hand at drawing enthalpy diagrams. How would you draw it for this um, reaction? Here's how it would look. You would have the reactants starting up high. They're going to lose energy, and so the products would be down low. And you would write delta H and the amount of energy change there. All right, great. So that concludes this idea of enthalpy diagrams. Remember that if it's an exothermic reaction, the products are going to end up lower in energy than the reactants were, and vice versa if it's an endothermic reaction. Thank you, and I hope you enjoyed this video.